And we continue at 106 in the afternoon. Talk Radio 790 KABC, the John Phillips Show, broadcasting live from the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Living Room Studios. Mr. Randy Wang's at the sports desk in Culver City. John Governor Gavin Newsom continues his New York tour. He spoke in front of the U.N. General Assembly for four minutes. How many times do you think he said? That is something we are mindful of. Oh, boy. This is like counting the jelly beans in the jar. It's a four-minute speech. I haven't listened to it yet, but I bet you, since it's about climate, there's going to be some mindfuls, there's going to be some foundationals, there's going to be some... Weather whiplash. And there's going to be some Mother Nature bats last and she bats a thousand. And there's also going to be the noises that he makes that makes every single one of his interviews sound like an obscene phone call. (laughs) Uh, uh. But it just didn't feel big enough. That is the best drop of Gavin. 800-222-KABC is the telephone number, 1-800-222-5222. And speaking of the warden, he is in New York City and did a sit-down with my old colleague and pal from CNN, who's now at News Nation, Chris Cuomo. That's right. It's Gavin and Cuomo together again because apparently they're friends and they text. So... Let me emulate Chris Cuomo and let's get after it, everybody. That's his catchphrase. Gov, thank you very much for taking the opportunity to be here. Uh, Full disclosure. Yes, sir. uh, Do governors like to be addressed as Gov? I'm sure Gavin Newsom does because he wants to look like one of the boys. The only person I've heard that really goes into that is Biden. And that's because usually he forgot the governor's name that he's talking to. Imagine him singing happy birthday to Gavin Newsom, forgetting his name. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alvin. Happy birthday to you. Almost sounded like Gavin. Just call him Gov. Full disclosure. Yes, sir. uh, You and I talk. I am very impressed by your acumen on the party and the state of play. Uh, It's an unusual quality. What are they texting about in the middle of the night? It has nothing to do with that. I can tell you that. Uh, it's an unusual quality for a number one, right? You know, you're a governor, you're head of state, but you see the game very well. But what's In going- fact, I'll almost guarantee you it's about Kimberly Guilfoyle. <laughs> you think Gavin's got some old pictures saved on his phone? 100%. And I appreciate you coming on here and giving us the opportunity. Great to be with you, especially in the studio. It's nice to have you. So uh, you're here in New York. It's UN Week. You're here for, as part of the Clinton Global Initiative. Yep. yep. And it's interesting because I'm watching the former president, yep. um, one of the most brilliant men I've ever seen in the sphere. And it's an interesting analogy to what's being said about the current president, Biden. Bill Clinton is sharp. He's smart. He cares. Right. He does not seem like he's ready to lead the country. He is younger than Biden. Is that a legitimate basis of criticism? It is weird to think about the fact that the guy who stopped being president in the year 2000, 23 years later, he's still younger than the current president. And Bill Clinton looks like his heart is just going to stop ticking any day now. It's hard to imagine him in that state, but that's really what he looks like. His hair is snow white. He moves around very slowly. And we're used to him seeing him with all kinds of energy. He's always getting on a plane. He's always going to different places. Remember back when he was president, Randy? He was at Camp David. He was whitewater rafting in Montana. He was at Martha's Vineyard. Martha, I'm coming up there to see you, little darling. I'm going to get me some of Martha. Martha, where are you, girl? Martha, come here. Sit on daddy's lap. Even though he hasn't been present for 23 years, and this was true when he was at the White House for a ceremony earlier this year, he still has that charm that Biden does not have. Uh, Fair point. I mean, look, we're getting down the rabbit hole on the age, and I've answered this question in a hundred different ways. And, of course, the immediate... Yeah, don't you have a job to do as governor of the state with like a thousand bills to sign and you're off gallivanting in New York doing any interview that will take you? There was just a cop that was killed in Los Angeles. It was the lead story the entire weekend. People are very upset about it. That is an opportunity for a governor, a mayor, to allow people to cry on their shoulder and grieve together. 
But no, he would love to be here and dealing with that tragedy. But national television called in New York. Does every state get News Nation? I think they do. Of course, the immediate pivot in my party is the understandable pivot. Look at the performance. Look at the success of the last two and a half years. Leave the judgment to the American people on age, which is fair game. And the president, I was with him last night, I think had two or three uh, uh, lines on this uh, where he's obviously getting... By the way, he told Dan Abash he was with the president last night, too. So Gavin is just bugging Joe constantly while he's up there. Oh, is he bugging Joe constantly or is he just name dropping on TV? <laughs> I he was, sounds like Kathy Griffin. I was with the president last night. Which is fair game. And the president, I was with him last night. I think had two or three. Did you get a chance to see me on CNN? I said such nice things about you. You know he's the type. You give him one invitation to the White House, he's going to steal all the cutlery. Uh, uh, lines on this uh, where he's obviously getting more and more comfortable with acknowledging the obvious, the conversation we're all having in this country. But at the, the end of the day... <laughs> He's doing it now. Can you catch that? Is it like a virus? Yes. Bad dialogue crutches are absolutely catchable. With acknowledging the obvious, the conversation we're all having in this country. But at the, the end of the day, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about someone that could put the best team on the uh, uh, on the field. I'm for oh, yeah. Since this is two guys going back and forth about politics, expect a bazillion sports metaphors. Uh, I'm 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 about someone that could put the best team on the uh, uh, on the field. I'm for someone who actually could produce the best results. And I've seen two and a half years of a master class of result making. I've seen someone who's also been doing deals. A uh, master class. That's what he says all the time. Master class. That's what Biden's doing. Master class. That's what Kamala's doing. Isn't the master class what's buying all the advertisements on your email where Stephen King will teach you how to write a novel? Why, yes, it is. Uh, and as a deal maker with the Republican Party on issues that I never thought both parties would come together on, from infrastructure to the Chips and Science Act to what he was able to do on the debt ceiling mm -hmm. itself, a trillion dollars of debt reduction that was part of that deal on gun safety. So I'm really proud of the president. I'm proud of what he's done, and I'm proud of his team. And you will know this well because uh, of your own experiences in politics. It's not about the guy or gal on the white horse. It's about those around the table. And he's brought together an extraordinary team, and that's why I'm a team player all in on Biden. Okay, that answer is exactly the same answer that he gave about Dianne Feinstein. Well, Mr. Governor, Dianne Feinstein's 90 years old and she doesn't know where she is. What is your take on that? Well, her staff is wonderful. He is talking about Joe Biden the same way he talks about Dianne Feinstein. He's a puppet. Gavin Newsom has asked... Doesn't Biden have a messaging problem if you're the one that has to come out here and say this because he can't? All in on Biden. So let's talk about that. There are two issues uh, with what you just said. The first one is that the message is only true if you get to make it. And whether it's age or stage or the people around him. Hey, that's a good lot. That's a good rhyme there, Mr. Cuomo. He could be mayor of Los Angeles. Whether it's age or stage or the people around him. I'm just going to save that because I don't have that many bits to do today. Here we go. The Democrats, I think, are rightly sanctioned for allowing the Republicans to dictate the narrative right now. Yeah. What you're talking about, we almost never hear from Democrats. The Republicans are saying, look at the grocery store, look at the gas pumps. Wait, Kenny Porter's saying, look at the grocery store. Every time she opens her mouth. Look at the gas pumps yeah. and look at basically just how he performs. And you're losing on that argument. Correct. Why are the Democrats allowing the narrative to be taken from? It's long been a source of deep anxiety for me, so much so that I started doing ads in Florida. <laughs> That's the reason, huh? To sort of counter my frustration. I'm mean, rather than pointing fingers, I was starting. No, it's because he watches Fox News 24 seven and wanted to see his face on the TV in a good light. Who do you think his favorite friend is on the five? Which is the one that drinks too much? Well, I think that's more than one. Judge Janine? I think he's a Janine fan. To sort of counter my frustration, I mean, rather than pointing fingers, I started to iterate, did billboards in seven states uh, around the issue of reproductive freedom, uh, focused the same in, in, in places. Gavin Newsom, keeping the outdoor advertising industry alive. Oh, yes. 
And there's nothing you love seeing more while you're driving down the highway than a billboard about abortion. <laughs> uh, focus the same in, in, in places like I did full page ads, in fact, uh, down in California. We'll be expecting you. That's right. Abortion tourism will keep that Golden Gate open. Come for the weather. Stay for the late-term abortion. <laughs> Full page has, in fact, uh, down in Texas. My point is, I'm trying. I'm going to red states. I'm trying to make the case. I'm listening. I'm learning. I'm iterating. I'm out here. Uh, at what point are you governing the state of California? No, he's doing everything but that, which is why we have bums on every block in the state. Uh, with the Clinton Global Initiative trying to absorb and just try uh, to reconcile the fact that, yeah, we have a messaging problem. We've been on the receiving end of CRT, DEI, ESG. Wait a second. Been on the receiving problem. We've been on the receiving end of. I just, uh, I might use this at some point. Problem. We've been on the receiving end of. I, I don't know when I would ever use this, but I'm just going to save it just in case. We've been on the receiving end of. I receive things on both ends. I have some ideas. <laughs> of CRT, DEI, ESG, all three, whatever has three letters, we seem to be on the receiving end. No one understands what woke is. Even Trump himself said, I don't even know how to define the term. Uh, but they're winning on the messaging. We're reacting. Trans issues, all these issues. They sell fear and panic on the border, inflation, on crime, and they sell calm and indifference on issues like climate change and public health. And so our job is to get on the offense and to redefine the terms of debate, that's what campaigns are about. That's why I'm actually excited as we turn on the campaign apparatus. We haven't even started, and we get back on the... But he announced his candidacy for re-election three months ago. What are you waiting for? We haven't even gotten started. And we get back on the field, and all... Oh, there's another sports metaphor. And we get back on the field, and all of us, Democrats, in positions of, of, of you know, importance... Moral authority, those Democrats that have no formal authority, and we get out and we make the case to the American people why this president and this administration deserve a second term. I would love to know when he believes Joe Biden is officially running for reelection. Is it like a gender reveal party where you have to crash a plane or start a fire, <laughs> blow something up? Yeah. <laughs> this, of course, leaves Chris Cuomo to lead, to ask the most obvious question. If you're out here making all of these statements then why isn't it you that's running? So message is my first point of confusion. Yep, messenger is an obvious one, but, you know, I have one of you at home. Uh, you're a sitting governor. I have a former sitting governor yeah. at home. <laughs> and when I... They live in together? Well, they both became pariahs around the same time. When I would talk about helping the national, I'd say, well, be careful because there's a line. If you believe it that much, then it should be you. And yeah. that's how I feel about you, Gov, which is I get that you want to help your team. Yeah. But why not you? If you really care that much about the issues, I know you say you're not running, yeah. which is yeah. unusual to put a period at it. Yeah. Exclamation why, if you point. care, why don't you run? Because I care? believe in this guy. Actually, you know, you know why? You think Joe Biden is the I... best the Democrats can do. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I hope you can differentiate because your BS meter is one of the best because you've been around this all your life. I don't like this guy. I have deep respect, reverence for Joe Biden as a person, his character, his decency. And you mean this guy? He's a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. <laughs> and his capacity to do great things. That's why I'm not worthy of that conversation. <laughs> Gavin says, I'm not worthy to be president. Joey guy, is. He's such a con artist. Who is believing a word that's coming out of his mouth? I'm not worthy of that conversation. This guy deserves it. And we, as, as members of the party, deserve to have his back more forcefully. And none of the nonsense. I'll I mean, yes, Joe won in 2020, but it wasn't like we were all excited for Joe. It was there were a lot of people that didn't want to vote for Trump. And go back to that Democratic primary. Kamala Harris was the one that the media was really promoting. After that first debate when she called Joe Biden David Duke, and she was the one on MSNBC, and she was the one that had all the glowing profiles written about her, she crashed and burned. It wasn't that Joe Biden was the one that everyone chose. He was just the last man standing. 
nonsense. All those, you, you, these quiet conversations you've been in, we've all been in. Folks talking behind the back that become headlines. And we're all chasing that right now. We've got to get on the team. We've got to get this, this guy reelected. And we've got to stop all the navel gazing and the hand wringing and all the behind the scenes quiet conversations off the record that tend to find their way into the press as, you know, a sources, you know, close yeah, but, to. But, but, the, the, but the, di the logic of it, I see what you're doing. Yeah. And you know how your polling goes. Yeah. You check every box that the current president doesn't for the people who are worried about him. How do you balance that with telling people, I'm here for you? What are the boxes, that he's not 80? He can go to a meeting and stay awake. How do you balance that with telling people, I'm here for you, I care about what matters to you, I'm going all over the country to make this message because I believe in it, but I'm not going to do it? I mean... Look what he did, not just at the G20, what he's done in G7. NATO's stronger than ever. It's larger than ever. What he's doing with the Quad, what he just did at Camp David uh, with Japan and Korea, South Korea. I mean, those are things, with all due respect to guys like me, we're not in a position. So you think he wins on the record? I think he's done an extraordinary job. I care about performance and character on both fronts. He's okay, stop the tape here. He is citing Joe Biden's trip to Asia as proof that he's 100% with it. Do we still have that clip of Joe Biden in Vietnam? Well, this is part of it. He's a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. But do you want the long version? Yes, because people need to understand the incoherent speech that he gave over there that Gavin Newsom is citing as rock-solid proof that Joe Biden is totally with it. And there's a... My, my brother loves having... There's famous lines from movies that he always quotes, you know, and one, one, one of them is there's, there's a movie about John Wayne, he's an Indian scout, and they're trying to get the, I think it was the Apache, one, one of the great tribes of America back on the reservation, and he's standing with the Union, so he's, they're all on, they're, and they're on their horses and their saddles, and there's three or four Indians in headdresses, and the Union soldiers, the Union soul was basically saying to the Indians, come with me, we'll take care of you, we'll be, everything will be good. And the Indian scout, the Indian looks at John Wayne and points to the Union soul and says, he's a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. Okay, keep in mind, he was delivering the speech to a room full of Vietnamese people in Vietnam, who I can assure you have never seen that movie. The movie he described also doesn't exist. It was being translated from English to Vietnamese, and they're trying to read the transcript of what he's saying and make some kind of sense of it. And everyone just sat there staring at him with their jaw on the ground. And just a little after that, he said, I'm going to bed. And then we went to sleep. Both fronts, he's the right guy. And end of the day, I... <laughs> there's oh. the second one. I told you. He's starting to do it as much as the Schiff and as much as the Breed. End of the day, I like the team he's put together, and I think that team should stay on the field, and I like the momentum. Again, with the sports metaphors. I like the team he's put together, and I think that team should stay on the field, and I like the momentum, and I like the direction of this country. And with all due respect, I get the Republican arguments about, well, we identify the obvious cost of eggs are higher, cost of gas is higher, but what the hell? Are they proposing to make a difference? Directionally, we're moving in the right direction. When you have a record that says you have seven times more jobs, seven times in the last three Republican administrations combined, I mean, that should be the easiest message in the world. But, to if, you, but if you don't actively do what you're doing right now, yeah. right, then in the vacuum, it's yeah. uh, right way, wrong way polls, bad for Biden. Yeah. Um, feelings about the economy, bad for Biden. Now, yeah. a lot of this is about how you message. That's what campaigns are about. You know this yeah. well. No, that's it. But we have to. The Democratic Party has to. I mean, I, I just brought up Bobby Kennedy. Kennedy. I remember you're propping him up. Like, no, here's, here's Newsom, Give me a uh, who everybody believes is part no. of the future of that, no. you know, you're part of the present. But you're propping him up. No. And they're going to get all the big names, no. and then here comes... He's getting extra groany. No, and, no, and, no. And. This almost doesn't sound human. No. It does kind of sound like a robot. No. <laughs> I'm just going to save that. Gavin, you're giving me lots of material today. I appreciate it. No. <laughs> no. 
Oh. And they're going to get all the big names, oh. and then here comes Obama, and here comes they got to prop up Biden because he can't do it himself. Oh, come on. That's what campaigns are about. It's about the party. What are parties about? I mean, I know your critique of the parties, but at the end of the day, but I remember. Bob- oh, there's another one. This is what, three so far in three clips? You give me any more, you're going in lay Miz, Gavin. At the end of the day, but I remember Bobby Kennedy. Remember that extraordinary moment after he lost his brother, he went to the convention. He couldn't even speak. 20 minutes standing ovation. It's a very short speech. People don't even remember the speech. They remember the emotion attached to it. He said, my brother was president of the United States because of all of you, the party, the Democratic Party, that infrastructure, that passion and action that was organized around their values. I think the party matters. It now matters more than ever in relationship to selling the message of the Biden administration. Again, it's about all of us, not about one person. I, I, I know we're all romantic about the guy or gal on the white horse that's going to come save the day, the old John Wayne construct. But- you mean the pony soldier? We just heard about that. He's a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. But I think it's a little more complicated and nuanced now. We had that with Trump. He promoted all that. He was the great performer. He was the great message. You're absolutely right. He'd be selling one damn thing. He'd sell one factory in the CHIPS Act and act like he had solved every damn problem in the world. When you got a president, we have a president, the lowest black unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, lowest unemployment for disabled people. Did he just turn into the Micro Machines guy? He did. President, the lowest black unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, lowest unemployment for disabled people. Seven- or since he's in New York, did he get some coke? Hispanic unemployment, lowest unemployment. I mean, maybe he met up with Kimmy. Hey, it's been a while. You got any of that white stuff? Well, there's a lot of stockbrokers in New York City. When you got a president, we have a president, the lowest black unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, lowest unemployment for disabled people, 70 year low for women. I mean, my God, we have an unbelievable opportunity to sort of segment the message. Get out of this country. If they believe. Yeah. And feel. Well, that's it. And that's facts, our facts don't win. Feelings win. Feelings win. We have been polarized and traumatized in the last four or five years. And, and all of us have to reconcile that. I mean, this whole, no, I mean, all the behavioral health issues, all of that stress that's been stacked is. You mean like from lockdowns? Gee, who was it that locked us all down here in the state of California and gave one fake doctor the power of God over all of us and our businesses? Who could that be? Yeah is real and it's a challenge for us and that's why it requires all of us because you're right people aren't feeling these things individually many are but in the aggregate clearly it's rep- well now you know why he spends his time going on vacation to dude ranches in montana because this guy is fond of shoveling manure And it's on full display on News Nation with Chris Cuomo. If you'd like to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. That's Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And Randy, if you want to listen to yesterday's show sometime later tonight, that is easy to do. That's right. Go to KABC.com, click on podcast, go to the Apple Podcast app, iHeart, Spotify, search for The John Phillips Show, hit subscribe. You can download all the episodes. You can also search for The John Phillips Show on YouTube, subscribe to the playlist there, and the episodes actually get sent straight to your phone. In other words, you are... We've been on the receiving end. It's Woo Wednesday. Ric Flair. It's Woo Wednesday. Yeah, baby. Woo, 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 woo. Which means tomorrow is Throwback Thursday. That's right. So if you got a suggestion for the playlist on tomorrow's show, an interesting theme for us, creativity is encouraged. We had food last week. That was a ton of fun. Someone said in honor of at the end of the day, it should be songs about days. Whatever you got for us, if you've got a great idea, call us in the next hour and give us your suggestion. And you, too, can choose all the music. A throwback Thursday. If you'd like to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And Randy, you're monitoring the mailbag. Steven writes in at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com and would like to hear what it sounds like if we take one Gavin clip that we cut from this interview and married it with another Gavin clip from a while ago. Let's see the result. We've been on the receiving end, but it just didn't feel big enough. I'll let you all marinate in those juices for a minute. We're listening to the sound of California Governor Gavin Newsom sit down with News Nation's Chris Cuomo. Let's hear what Gavin has to say on reflecting on the mistakes he made during the COVID-19 lockdowns. Two other big ticket items. Yes, sir. One is 
Um, very brave, uh, and you know me well enough, everybody does. I'm not here to pat politicians on the back. No. To say, I would have done... Since he's gone to News Nation, has he gotten more New Yorker? A little bit. To say... I would have done a lot of things differently yeah. if I could look back at the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Why did you say that? And what would you have done differently? Because I'm in the process. I mean, it's about humility and grace. It's about acknowledging the criticism. It's about taking that to heart. You mean listening to this show? But when he's pressed on the specifics, go back to an interview that we played from earlier with him. And one of the questions was, well, did you make a mistake by shutting down the schools? Well, I'm not getting into that. No, he doesn't want to talk about that. It's about taking that to heart and it's about learning uh, from the past so you don't repeat it. It's about being more prepared going forward. And we just went through an exercise. I brought people that disagree with. We did interviews with folks internationally as well. Some of our most fierce critics. uh, And we did interviews with them. And then I brought folks around the table and we had a three day summit of sorts. And we're putting together a report that's very self-critical. What would we have done better in terms of our messaging? What we could have done better in those early conversations around masks? Okay, messaging, messaging. That's what he's talking about here. That's what Barbara Ferrer said. Yeah. Remember when she was asked about it and she said communication, meaning she should have done a better job at convincing you that she's right and you're wrong. No, thank you. That doesn't mean you're reflecting on your failures. That means you wish you had more power. What could we have done better in terms of the distribution of vaccines and the prioritization of them? Could we have regionalized our approach as opposed to one size fits all earlier? All those things with some sense, again, of humility and grace to those that still are feeling the stress and aftermath of that experience. To the critics who say it was intentional, that guys like you, like my brother, uh, like, you know, the president, not Trump, but for some reason, Biden, even though Trump owned it first, Uh, You did the masks to shut us down. You did the vaccine to help big pharma. Uh, You did these things uh, for bad reasons. And and, and, and I love the big pharma when I'm producing my own insulin. We're actually creating our own manufactured insulin. I'm not into subsidizing costs. I want to lower. We're also making our own Narcan. (laughs) Fundamental costs. No state's done more against big pharma. Nonsense. And by the way, your brother did a magnificent job in the beginning. What? If you think... Andrew Cuomo did a magnificent job, and you think you've learned something from your failures? You're delusional. And by the way, your brother did a magnificent job in the beginning. None of us knew what we did. No one. You mean like when Andrew Cuomo would go on with Chris Cuomo on CNN and do comedy bits? As people were dying in the nursing homes? They made a prop giant Q-tip? None of us knew what we did. No one. We're all geniuses in hindsight. Not just experts, geniuses. I mean, he was trying to find body bags. I was trying to find body bags. I had to bring them from other states. Mobile, mobile morgues. People forget all that. It's literally, it's amnesia, what we were up against early. And you had nurses saying, wait, wait, we can't get masks. Before you hand them out to everybody else, they were desperate, desperate. So it was understandable. Even Fauci in the beginning, there was some ambiguity in that. Now, in hindsight, we could have expressed that more clearly. That's a perfect example of an area when we look back. Now we understand reagents. Remember those? I mean, there were- it's all about messaging. That's right, because that way you're not admitting to any faults as a point of policy. It's just you weren't on TV enough. Reagents. Remember those? I mean, there were a lot of nuances, our own stockpiles, our own ventilators. You got to make sure that you upgrade those ventilators. You got to make sure they're continued to be recharged. A lot of storage issues, all those things, again, with some grace and humility. So uh, I applauded what your brother did early in this pandemic. Uh, And by the way, why is he kissing Andrew Cuomo's ass to Chris Cuomo's face? I'm not sure, particularly on a channel that very few people watch. He must think that Chris Cuomo is going to get hired at Fox or hired at MSNBC or some other network and that he needs to be in good graces with Chris Cuomo. Uh, And by the way, the facts bear out the successes. And this, to me, is the most galling part, particularly when you have a Republican Party claiming this mantle of life. You look at the per capita deaths in these states, including Florida. I mean, it's 28.8 percent higher per capita deaths in the state of Florida than the state of California. We outperformed them in GDP in 2020. We contracted at a lower rate and we had a higher growth rate in 2021. And in- How about 2022? Let's throw that in there. 
and in education, in three out of four categories, they had higher learning loss than states like California. New York fared similarly. So there's a lot of revisionist history here on the pages, with all due respect, uh, of the Wall Street Journal and others that are sort of segmenting facts, segmenting facts and winning the debate because we're exhausted about this conversation. But I think we have not done the analysis and we've not done justice to a self-reflective critique of our own relationship to this and the actions that we took. And I think that's important for all of us, the American people. Did you hear any actual reflection? No. <laughs> no. When you're talking about what you've learned from something that you did wrong, typically what you do is you have a list. Ten things, five things, three things, whatever. Pretend you're Letterman. I shouldn't have shut down the beaches. I shouldn't have shut down the schools. I shouldn't have made people show proof of vaccination to go to restaurants. I shouldn't have given people like Barbara Ferrer the power of God at the county level due to my never-ending state of emergency. Those are the types of things that you need to learn from your failures if you don't want to repeat them again. But just saying you weren't clear in convincing the public that your policy positions were correct is not something that shows that you've learned anything. He wants the credit for being self-reflective without actually having to do it. That's what he's doing here. And this is a perfect example as to what destroyed our economy, what destroyed businesses, what destroyed the lives of children who were isolated for as long as they were isolated and produced all of the psychological damage the isolation, the shutdowns, not being able to go to school, not being able to go to AA meetings, not being able to do all the things that keep our society sane and healthy, not understanding that you screwed that up. This is a narcissist to the nth degree. No. Narcissists can never admit they did anything wrong. Trump gets accused of that all the time. And Trump is a first-class narcissist. There's no question about that. But he's kind of a narcissist that wears it on his sleeve. I'm the best. I'm the most successful. I'm the richest. I never make a mistake. He's almost cartoonish the way he does it. With Gavin Newsom, he's just as, as bad. He's the same thing. He's the same person. But he wants credit for being open-minded and scientific, and listening to the experts, and reflective, and acknowledging his own shortfalls. Even though this guy's narcissism is the size of North Dakota. His ego. This guy's a dangerous guy. I know we make fun of him on this show because what he does and says is so ridiculous on a daily basis. But this guy is a megalomaniac. Google it. If you want to email the show, you can do so at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com. And Randy, you're monitoring the mailbag. Will writes in at Johnny Don't Like Show at gmail.com, one of our favorites. Can't believe you haven't pointed out the obvious. Goofball Gavin is, in fact, a robot. He's the reject of an AI research facility. He's AU, artificial unintelligence, who crashed headfirst into a snowbank of Colombian sugar and started psychobabbling cliches faster than the fake doctor could bankrupt a mirror factory. <laughs> that right there is creative writing. No. All right, we've got one more hour coming up on the John Phillips Show. Don't you go anywhere. This is Talk Radio 790 KABC. We've been on the receiving end, but it just didn't feel big enough.